Well, she arrived back in April last year and she was in a horrific state. I mean, she'd basically been abandoned for six years in tropical waters, aluminium boat, anodes eaten away, sails down, down below wet. Uh, bits of her have been ripped apart, nicked from the deck. I mean, it was just an absolutely tragic, tragic sight. So the marina, I'm so pleased that they did email me and said, you know, who owns your boat? Because this iconic yacht is sort of slipping away from us. Um, so by the time we brought her back, we, we knew that she was in a terrible state. We had no idea to what extent it was until we really, so we shot blasted her and we just went, wow. <gasps> okay, bigger job than we had thought. So, you know, a six month job turned into a, a full year's complete restoration which um, came to one of its conclusions. There's still a little bit more to do, but we put her back in the water yesterday and she just looks so beautiful. I, I think she looks sleeker. Um, the the grey is slightly darker, which is the grey she should have been, because um, of course we had to borrow the paint last time, but this time we could buy it. She just looks fantastic and everyone's worked so hard on her. So what we decided we wanted to do was raise money for girls' education. So we've linked in with six partner charities who work alongside our foundation, the Maiden Factor Foundation. And the way we want to raise awareness and money is to do a three-year world tour. We're visiting 30 stopovers in 20 countries over the three years. That's 51,000 miles. And um, I think I did told the crew that and they're like, is that 51,000 miles? So uh, we leave on the 22nd of September from uh, Southampton. We hope lots of people will be there to see us off. First stop is Jordan, and it's a bit of a special one really for us because Maiden's never been to Jordan, even though King Hussein got us to the start line the first time. And our sponsor this time is Her Royal Highness Princess Haya Bint Al Hussein under her Anything Is Possible banner. So that's going to be very special. Then to Dubai, where Princess Haya lives, um, Mumbai, Australia, and then the, the rest of the route we'll be announcing on, on the website soon. You're taking a day you're taking some superstar skippers. First one unveiled today. Tell us a little bit about, about that side and who's going to be sailing her. Okay, so we have a core crew, extraordinary, extraordinary women who are so far beyond my level of qualifications and sailing experience that, that I was at that age. I mean, that is how women's sailing has come on. You know, it is, we've got this core base now of women with this extraordinary experience becoming skippers and it, it's we're here whereas before we were sort of there so we've got these amazing four women on the crew um and uh, then we so that's uh, mary sutherland uh, belinda henry amelia ralphs and matilda and yanka um and they are going to be a core crew the whole way around and then we thought what we'd do to keep up interest and also because it's great for the girls maybe have a bit of a change is we would have key um, guest skippers and so we decided that we would ask Dee Kafari to be our first skipper. She said yes. I'm so overexcited. Um, we've also asked Wendy Tuck and she said yes um, and we're speaking to a number of other uh, skippers as well. So for me, you know, Maiden carried the first all-female crew to race around the world. Dee Kafari was the first woman to sail single-handed both ways around the world and Wendy Tuck finally 30 years later is the first woman to win around the world race. It's all coming together very nicely.